The Su family brings back their daughter Su Yen, who was sent to the countryside to be blind 13 years ago. Su Yen, who was blindfolded with a black cloth, immediately became the laughing stock of the entire courtyard, a pitiful sight in everyone's eyes. Until one day, a prominent figure personally came to the door and said, Master Su, please accept this banner. The richest man drove a thousand miles and said, Master Su, thank you for paving a grand road for me. Young talents from all over the country have broken through the threshold and want to marry her as their daughter. In law. Not to mention that, the most infuriating thing is that the male gods of all the girls in the courtyard also stare at her every day, constantly going up to pay homage, secretly poking and blocking her inside the room, asking her to perform a doll kiss. It's really infuriating. Keywords of the novel The Little Pity of the 800 Courtyards is a master of metaphysics without pop-ups, The Little Pity of the 800 Courtyards is a master of metaphysics. Download the complete text of the text, and The Little Pity of the 800 Courtyards is the latest chapter reading of the master of metaphysics. Chapter 1. Is a Blind Man. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 is a blind man in 1980, Xinghua High School. On the large locust tree outside the teaching building, cicadas chirped incessantly, and the already hot and dry weather made people even more restless. In the classroom of Class 3, there was chaos due to Su Yan's appearance. A slender and thin figure of 1.65 meters tall, even wearing black pants cannot conceal the perfect proportion of two long legs. Unusual girls have two fried dough twists braids hanging on their chest, and their long braided hair is high and neat. But the most eye-dot catching thing is still her face, with a black cloth covering most of her palm-sized cheeks, making it difficult to see her complete appearance. Dozens of pairs of eyes fell on her in unison. She is the new transfer student who just arrived today, and she is also blind. When I came in, I was still holding a black stick in my hand. Not to mention the students in the class, even Zhou Fang, as the class teacher, was stunned for more than ten seconds when he saw the black cloth on Su Yan's eyes. Cough, be quiet. Can this student introduce themselves? The noisy classroom was suddenly silent, and all the faces had the same expression. Gossip and curiosity. Su Yan faced ahead and said, my name is Su Yen. One second. Two seconds. It was another ten second pause that made everyone realize she had finished speaking. You can sit in the last row, by the window. Zhou Fang heard such a simple self introduction for the first time in her life, but she didn't intend to ask any more questions and directly designated her seat. Teacher, she can't see with her eyes. Suddenly, someone gloated and reminded me. To everyone's surprise, Su Yen stepped forward amidst a sea of mocking laughter. And the direction she walked towards was exactly the seat that Zhou Fang had just pointed to. All voices came to a sudden halt. Isn't she blind? Even if you're not blind, you can't see anything with that black cloth over your eyes, right? Under a stunned gaze, Su Yen had already walked to the last seat. The atmosphere in the classroom is extremely strange. Zhou Fang suppressed his unusual thoughts and only regarded Su Yan's actions as a stroke of luck. All right, let's start the class. Su Yan sat by the window, facing out from the side, and looking in that direction, it was clearly the huge locust tree outside the principal's office. As soon as the bell rang for the end of class, she immediately became the center of attention in the classroom. Su Yan, can't you really see with your eyes? As the class flower, Song Shui was gathered at the front, shaking her hand in front of her as she asked. Mmm. Su Yen allowed them to probe without hiding or dodging. Can't you even see that you can write? It's a problem to leave this classroom, isn't it? Song Shui stared at her face and her words were full of provocation and ridicule. Although Su Yen only came to school on the first day, she knew her. Because she and Su Mo are very close friends, and Su Mo is Su Yan's stepsister. The situation of the Su family is very special. A few days ago, 
she didn't even know that there was still a daughter like Su Yen in the Su family. Su Mo's mother was a reorganized family. When Su Mo was six years old, her mother remarried with her, and Su Jiangwo was very kind and treated her like her own. After more than a decade, Su Mo had long regarded Su Jiangwo as his biological father and became the eldest daughter of the Su family. But just three days ago, Su Mo suddenly lost his mind and told her that Su Jiangwo had a daughter foster outside, and Su Jiangwo had arranged a vehicle to pick her up and come back. And that daughter is this blind Su Yen. Su Yan's return made Su Mo feel a deep sense of crisis, afraid that she would take away her status as the eldest daughter and her father's favor. Unexpectedly, this blind man came to her class. Of course, she should take care of her sisters instead. Don't worry about it. Su Yan's perfunctory remarks made many people's faces appear sarcastic and dissatisfied. Hey, what's your attitude? I see you're just trying to be mysterious, using a black cloth to cover your eyes and pretend you're a masked hero. Li Hu was the first to act in the crowd. He has always had a crush on Song Shui, so of course he won't miss the opportunity to perform so well. As he spoke, he reached out his hand to Su Yen, wanting to tear off the black cloth on her face and make her feel embarrassed. Just as he was about to touch the black cloth, Su Yen suddenly pinched his wrist. The speed is so fast that no one can even see clearly how she acted. By the time everyone reacted, Li Hu had already screamed in pain. He felt as if his wrist was being clamped with iron pliers, and with just a little force from Su Yen, the bones would break. Everyone's gaze at Su Yen changed. I used to think of her as a little blind person who could be bullied at will, but I didn't expect her to have such fierce means. Li Hu kept wailing tears were about to come out. Su Yen sneered and as he let go, he was also thrown out. This time even the air in the classroom has solidified. I don't know if I was scared by her fierce attack, but no one dared to approach her seat again throughout the afternoon. However, the news of a blind transfer student from class 3 quickly spread throughout the school. Even many teachers couldn't resist their curiosity and took the initiative to come and see her. If ordinary students were to be watched like this, they would have been unable to adapt and run away, but Su Yen remained calm from beginning to end, allowing them to scrutinize. Until the last physical education class, Song Shui and a few girls once again found Su Yen, who was enjoying the cool under the tree. Su Yen, the physical education teacher said that the remaining activities need to be moved to another place. Let's take you there. Because she was blind, the physical education teacher let her move around freely when she first started class. There is still a considerable distance from the playground here, and even if all the students are active on the playground, there is no sound to be heard. Su Yen raised her head, not sure if it was because of the black cloth strip that made her cheeks smaller and her skin white enough to be translucent. Song Shui suddenly felt a little jealous, looking at her as if she had been poisoned. Where are you going? Su Yen didn't seem to doubt what she had just said. Let's take you over, Song Shui and several other girls said with an excited expression Su Yen stood up, still holding the black stick in her hand. Song Shui put on a good classmate's demeanor and thoughtfully guided her on the way. A few girls quickly left the school through the back door and arrived at an abandoned building several hundred meters away. Most of the building has collapsed, and not a single window is intact. The corridors are covered in spider webs, and a musty smell is coming in. The chattering girls all tightened their cheeks and instinctively gathered together after entering. If it weren't daytime now, they wouldn't dare to approach here no matter what. Reading Guide The background of the new book is fictional, please do not bring it in. New book opens up a pit, I hope everyone has a pleasant time following the article, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Powerful Abnormal Pupils You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Powerful Abnormal Pupils Even if they were not blind, they could feel the unease and nervousness emanating from Song Shui and the others, and in the end, they all went to the innermost room on the second floor together. For some unknown reason, 
this room is actually much darker than outside. Even though it is currently scorching hot, it still gives off an indescribable chill. Some tables, chairs, and benches in the room were crooked, and the dust had already formed a thick layer. They just came in and wanted to run away. Suyen, you. Just wait here for a moment. The teacher and other classmates will come over soon, Song Xuecheng suppressed her fear and said to her. And you guys. Su Yan's calm voice further confirmed that she was indeed blind. Let's go call out to others. Before Song Xue could even finish her sentence, several other girls had already rushed out of the door. Accompanied by the sound of hurried footsteps, there was the click of the door being locked. Everyone ran out of the abandoned building in one breath, sweating profusely. Although Song Shui was panting heavily, the expression on her face was uncontrollable excitement. Song Shui, is it really okay to keep Su Yen inside? Wang Lan just glanced in that direction and couldn't help but shiver. All the students in Xinhua know that this building has been abandoned because there have been deaths and ghosts inside. And this is a taboo throughout the county no one dares to enter. What can I do? Just teach that girl a lesson. You don't really think there are ghosts in this world, do you? Don't joke, we're all high school students now. How can we promote feudal superstition? Song Shueli spoke confidently, completely forgetting the same fear and fear he had a few minutes ago. But. It's nothing serious, don't forget that you agreed to do it before. Just lock her up all night and let her out early tomorrow morning. See if she dares to be arrogant in the future. She didn't go back all night, what should her family do if they look for her? Su Yen is in such a special situation, let alone overnight. Even if it gets dark and she doesn't go back home, her family will definitely come to find her. Don't worry, there's no need for us to worry about her family, Song Shui said with a meaningful smile Su Yan's fingers lightly brushed over the dusty tabletop, and then walked to the window, which was mostly shattered. There are even a pair of footprints hanging down there. She only came to this school on the first day, and these people gave her such a big surprise. The airflow surged around her, and a black ghost suddenly appeared behind her out of nowhere. Sir, those little girls are really bad. They deliberately trapped the adults here and wanted to use the dead ghosts here to persecute them. The ghostly figure drifted on Su Yan's side with great fear, recounting everything he had just heard from Song Shui to Su Yan. In the end, he was filled with righteous indignation and gritted his teeth. Although Su Yan's eyes were covered by black cloth, it did not affect her ability to see everything. There are no ghosts here, or the time has not come out yet. The floating ghost paused for a moment, and since the adult said there was no such thing, naturally there was none. Sir, do you need me to teach those little girls a lesson? I'm not such a stingy person, Su Yen said, with a slightly raised corner of her mouth. The ghost suddenly shuddered and automatically left her a few meters away. Every time an adult shows this expression, it indicates that someone is going to suffer. However, those few girls who don't know the superiority and inferiority of the world are simply lacking in attention. It's hard to provoke anyone, but it's really impatient to provoke adults who even have to kowtow and beg for mercy when they see ghosts. Sir, do we need to go back now? Carefully asking. Su Yen picked a chair that was not too dirty, wiped it clean, and sat down. This place is pretty good. After speaking, he turned his head and closed his eyes. The ghost didn't dare to say a word more and disappeared without a trace. Su Yen didn't know if she had fallen asleep, and her thoughts returned to her childhood. Her memory lingers in the year when she fell ill at the age of five. A high fever made her fall asleep for several days and nights, when suddenly someone came to her home. That person said she had a curse in her life. If she stayed by her father's side, she wouldn't have lived to be ten years old. The only way to crack it was to send her thousands of miles away, preferably to find a family with no offspring to adopt. Her father actually believed it and somehow found Grandma Lee. At that time, Grandma Lee was only 48 years old and her husband died early. 
she lived with her only son in Dalyishu village. Just a year before adopting her, Grandma Lee's son and grandson suddenly fell into the mountains, with no bones left, leaving her as the only living person in the entire family. Actually, later on she felt even more that Grandma Lee had found her. Since then, she has been living with Grandma Lee, which is strange to say. After arriving at Grandma Lee's house, she has never had another illness. Even the blindness caused by a high fever recovered in a sudden day. She remembers very clearly that day was her eighth birthday. Grandma Lee told her that the time had come, and then the dark world would shine. And not only did it have brilliance, but there were also more terrifying things. She can see people, and even more so, she can see everything that people cannot see. It turns out that there are really ghosts and monsters in this world. They live in another world, a world that can only be accessed after human death. It was also on that day that she found out that Grandma Lee, who was raising her, was actually a very powerful godmother. Not only can it ward off evil spirits and avoid ghosts for the villagers, but it can also transcend the reincarnation of evil spirits. But these are too terrifying for an eight-year-old child. That time she was scared and fell asleep for three whole days, and it took another month to accept this reality. Grandma Lee said that her eyes are the most powerful magical tools in this world, not only able to eliminate all monsters and monsters, but also able to open the door to another world. Since that moment, her life has never been peaceful again. Every day, countless ghosts and monsters want to approach her, some want her to help fulfill their wishes before death, and some want her eyes. If it weren't for Grandma Lee's profound moral skills and her ability to protect her every time, I'm afraid she would have been torn into pieces by these ghosts and monsters long ago. A year passed aimlessly, and once Grandma Lee almost risked her life to save her. That time, she cried. She doesn't want to live a lifetime under the protection of Grandma Lee, but wants to become the person she can protect. Afterwards, she embarked on a path that ordinary people could not imagine. After ten years of cultivation, even Grandma Lee couldn't predict her current abilities. The black cloth that covers her eyes is a trait, not to protect her, but to protect all the ghosts and monsters that appear around her. Because as long as she is scanned by her eyes, even the most powerful ghost will turn into nothingness, but not all ghosts and monsters deserve to die. Girl, remember not to take off the black cloth until you have complete control over these eyes. But my mother. In. Law believes you, it won't be far from that day. This is the last warning that Grandma Lee said to her before leaving. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Daughter Slave You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Daughter Slave When Su Yen woke up, the sky outside had completely darkened, and the surroundings were so quiet that there was no sound. And in this room, it was so dark that she couldn't see her fingers. Just as she was about to get up and go home, suddenly a gloomy atmosphere slowly filled the air. She looked at the place where the Yin energy was gathering, not too tight or too slow, her eyes deep under the black cloth. It's a bit interesting. After speaking, a Yin wind blew everywhere, and a white ghost suddenly appeared. That is a female ghost, with disheveled hair and all her facial features mixed together, and her limbs hanging down in a strange posture. After discovering Su Yan's existence, the entire ghost body shook violently, seeming to be twisted with joy. It's so ugly. Su Yan glanced at it and then came to this conclusion. The female ghost suddenly stopped all her movements, leaving only her big, white-eyed eyes staring straight at her. Can you? See me. The piercing sound of a broken saw falling on a bellows is more like a scratch on one's heart. Su Yen smiled and said, Give you two seconds, or else you'll stay. A sweet smile in this gloomy room is like a brilliant poppy. The female ghost was so excited that she opened her bloody mouth and rushed towards Su Yen. Give me your face. Seeking death. Su Yen didn't dodge or dodge and a spell emitting a golden halo came out of her hand. The female ghost let out a mournful scream, and the entire body made a terrifying sound of piercing and burning. 
All the anger was replaced by the fear that was about to dissipate, and the instinctive frenzy twisted to escape. Su Yen watched the scene expressionlessly, until the female ghost was suppressed by the spell and turned into a wisp of smoke, completely dissipating. Isn't it the essence? As early as the moment she stepped into the county town, she had already noticed something unusual here. The entire Xinhua High School and the ten-mile radius around it were shrouded in a huge aura of stillness, which was exactly what she needed to control her eyes. That's why she told Su Jiangwo to come to Xinhua to study. The teachers, students, and residents in this high school have not been greatly affected. There must be a secret here that she doesn't know yet. Textile Courtyard, Su Family Su Jiangwo paced incessantly in the yard, with a worried expression that was more like an old mother than an old mother. Dad, it's getting so dark now. Let's go back to the house. Su Emo came to his side, her face full of obedience. Su Jiangwo turned his head to look at her and said, Did Yen Yen really say he wanted to live with his classmates? He thinks this is not quite right. Can his daughter make such good friends on her first day at school? Moreover, that child has a naturally cold temperament and is not close to anyone. Su Emo nodded very seriously and said, That's what she said after school, and she also told us not to worry. Su Jiangwo frowned tightly. Su Emo had always been considerate and sensible in his heart, always lying, so even if he felt it was inappropriate, he didn't doubt anything. Su Emo is also studying in Xinhua, just one grade higher than Su Yen. With her taking care of Su Yen, he naturally feels at ease. Before it got dark, he also specifically went to find Gu Yang, who also said that Su Yen had nothing to do at school. Dad, Yen Yen just came back and didn't quite adapt to the family. Staying at a good friend's house for a night is also good for relaxing. Su Mo's analysis was clear, dispelling Su Jiangwo's slight anxiety. Su Jiangwo sighed in his heart. For so many years, he had not fulfilled the responsibility of a father, and now it is normal for his precious daughter to not be close to him. At this moment, Li Qiuhua came out of the room, holding a coat in his hand and thoughtfully draped it over Su Jiangwo's body. Strong sleep. Su Chang was a child born after Su Jiangwo and Li Qiuhua had been married for eight years, and he is only five years old this year. I'm asleep. Li Qiuhua glanced at the dark alley outside under the moonlight and muttered in dissatisfaction, this child is really not good. He hasn't been staying up at night in the courtyard for only a few days, and even rumors have spread that his reputation is not good. Su Jiangwo immediately gave her a fierce glare and shouted loudly, my daughter is doing nothing wrong, as long as she is happy. Li Qiuhua pursed his lips, obviously feeling dissatisfied, but he didn't dare to add fuel to the fire. Mom, Yen Yen has always been used to living a carefree life in the countryside, so naturally she doesn't have so much attention to detail, Su Mo's jealousy flashed in her eyes and her voice became increasingly gentle it seems to be explaining for Su Yen, but the implication that she is a wild child in the village is all too obvious. Sure enough, Su Jiangwo's cheeks were slightly tense. Dad, Mom, Yen Yen will definitely not come back. Let's go back to the house and sleep, Su Mo thought of Su Yan's tragic appearance of being locked up in that abandoned building, calling him Tian Tian Buing and Di Di Ling, and almost couldn't help but laugh. Su Jiangwo sighed and was about to return to his house when he glanced at the alley again, and then his whole body burst into energy in an instant. Is that Yen Yen? At night, it was a bit cloudy, so even the stars were sparse and sparse, making it impossible to see who the person was. However, he immediately confirmed that it was his own daughter. Su Mo was clearly stunned and couldn't believe it. Impossible. Song Shui was quite certain that Su Yen was locked on the second floor of an abandoned building, and it was impossible for her to come out unless she jumped out the window, let alone that she was still blind. Su Jiangwo widened his eyes and two seconds later let out a terrifying cry, Girl, you're really back. Before even the words could be spoken, the person had already run out. The speed is like jumping rabbits in the field. 
Su Yen, who was walking leisurely, was startled by the sudden voice. Before she could react, a figure had already arrived in front of her. Girl, why did you come back so late? You're so worried about me. Su Jiangwo sucked his nose hard, to the point where his eyes turned red. Ah. Su Yen's mouth twitched, and those who didn't know thought she had gone to the fiery sea at the foot of the Blade Mountain. Su Jiangwo was eager to help her, but he remembered that on her first day back, she had said very seriously that she didn't like to have too close contact with people, even as a father, he couldn't do it, so he had to hold back hard. Girl, did you come back on your own? Are you afraid of the dark road? Are you getting lost? Su Yen listened to his incessant inquiries, although she knew he was concerned, she couldn't help feeling a bit overwhelmed. Didn't you stay at your classmate's house? How did you come back? Li Qiuhua saw that she naturally didn't have the joy she had imagined, and her mouth sank Su Mo's heart. Her mother's mouth really never disappointed her at any time. Did I stay at my classmate's house? Su Yan's final tone slightly rose, instead in a questioning tone. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Made me swallow her You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Made me swallow her Before Su Jiangwo noticed something unusual, Su Emo immediately took a few steps forward and said, After school this afternoon, I met your classmates and they said you were going to stay at a friend's house for the night. Su Yen turned her head and looked at her. Although her eyes were covered in black cloth, Su Emo suddenly felt like she had seen through her for some reason. Subconsciously grabbing the hem of her clothes with both hands, nervously preparing to respond to her continued questioning. They made a mistake, I just wandered around the school and wasted time. Su Yan's answer completely stunned Su Emo, completely confused about what she was thinking in her heart. You child can't see, how can you still wander outside? Your father is so worried. Li Chilhua complained and then looked at her suspiciously, it's so dark, you walked back on your own. This is not scientific. Although the distance from the courtyard to the school is not too far, it is also several streets away. She only went to school for the first day today, can a blind person be so skilled? Whether it's dark or not makes no difference to me, Su Yen said casually. Her eyes were able to see everything clearly, whether during the day or at night when she couldn't see anything. However, when Su Jiangwo heard this, it became a different meaning, causing a pain in his heart and giving Li Qiuhua a fierce look. Don't say anything if you don't know how to speak. Although my family has some eye problems, my ears and nose are very functional, which is something that ordinary people cannot do. Although he was praising, Su Yen still wanted him to shut up. Four people entered the room together. Su Yen's room is the same as Su Mo's before. Su Jiangwo said that Su Mo knew he wanted to pick her up, so he deliberately gave up his room and moved it to the westernmost room where miscellaneous items were piled up. When she heard these, she didn't react and didn't refuse either. The room is not too big, but compared to her in Dalyusha village, it is simply too spacious and comfortable. The walls are no longer adobe, even the ground has been smoothed with cement. A 1.5-dot-meter bed, a single-door wardrobe, and a desk are all available. However, even though it is comfortable here, her true home is still daily issue village with Grandma Lee. Girl, there is hot water just filled in the pot. When drinking, be sure to pour it out first and don't scald it too much. You didn't dare to eat dinner, so if you feel hungry, you can eat this package of walnut pastries, and these two boiled eggs are also placed on your bedside, lying down and reaching out to get them. Su Jiangwo is like an old mother, giving every detail of her advice. Afraid that Su Yen might not be able to find it, the peach pastry wrapped in oil paper was replaced in several of the most prominent places. Okay, you go sleep. No matter how enthusiastic he is, Su Yen only responded lightly. Su Jiangwo rubbed his hands and had no intention of going out immediately. Daughter, can Dad discuss something with you? Carefully sitting next to her, but the distance between the two was about half a meter. Speak up, 
Su Yan was absent dot minded, all her attention focused on wiping the black stick. In the future, let dad come over to pick you up after school, right? Su Jiangwo's face was full of flattery. If the people in the factory saw his current appearance, they would definitely be shocked. Is this still their deputy factory director Su who never shows mercy? There's no need for that. Su Yen certainly knew he was worried, but it was indeed unnecessary. Besides, he also has work to do. Su Jiangwo was extremely disappointed and said, Can we stop staying out so late in the future? This doesn't necessarily mean I have my own things to do. To be honest, what Su Yen does is always inconvenient during the day. Su Jiangwo, who was rejected twice in a row, looked as if he had been hurt. Su Yen sensed his emotions and said, I'll try my best. I knew Yen Yen was the most obedient, so you should rest early. If you have anything to do at night, just call me in your auntie Chiohua, Su Jiangwo said finally, with a final warning, I stood up. But he first glanced at Su Yen to make sure she didn't pay attention to him, then picked up her coat on the hanger and quietly stuffed ten yuan into her pocket. Su Yen naturally knew everything about his every move. I'm not short of money. Su Jiangwo deliberately turned his back to her, trembling with fear. Sometimes he really feels that his daughter can't see and is covered in a black cloth, but it works better than anyone's eyes. It's not like being at home here. Everything you do requires money. You can buy whatever you want to eat outside, and you don't have to save your dad. After speaking, fearing that Su Yen would even refuse his money, he walked out as quickly as possible. Su Yen felt a bit helpless. Since their father and daughter met, he has been trying his best to please her, even being cautious when talking to her. She had no hatred toward Su Jiangwo, after all, at that time he made that choice just to keep her alive. Even if he later married his wife again, she felt it was only natural that he was still young and there was no need to spend his entire life for his deceased wife. But Su Jiangwo obviously didn't think so. From beginning to end, it seemed like he owed her. However, Su Jiangwo's actions just now reminded her that living in the city is not like living in a village. In the future, she will also send money back to Grandma Li, and it is time to consider some secular issues. Late at night, people are still. The door of Su Yan's house slowly opened. Su Mo tiptoed in. She's really fed up with it. She can't figure out how Su Yan got out of the abandoned building, and even started to suspect that her blindness was actually a facade. Because the room was too dark, she walked extremely carefully and finally felt to the bedside. Approaching Su Yen, who was sleeping soundly, I saw that her eyes were still covered with the black cloth, which made me even more convinced that there was a problem. After all, it's not necessary to fall asleep. Just as she was about to lift the black cloth, a chill suddenly hit her back, and immediately her hair stood up all over her body. What's behind her? This thrill came too quickly and her head buzzed with nothing but fear. I dare not turn back at all, and I don't remember what I had to do to panic and run away from the door. At the moment of her escape, Su Yan's lips curved into a sarcastic smile. Hiss. A painful low cry came from outside, clearly indicating that Su Mo had bumped into something, but soon everything inside and outside returned to silence. Is it fun? Su Yen still lay down without any movement. The ghostly figure slowly emerged in the corner, Your Excellency, this woman has a more malicious mind than us ghosts. Are you just letting her do whatever she wants? Why don't you let the little one swallow her in one gulp and settle everything? Am I keeping you to eat alive? End of this chapter Chapter 5 Flower Madness you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 5 Flower Madness There was no emotional fluctuation in Su Yan's voice, but the ghost suddenly trembled and immediately shrank into a ball, trembling and howling. Sir, the little one is wrong. Get lost. After Su Yan finished speaking, she closed her eyes again. The ghost also instantly dissipated into the darkness, as if it had never appeared before. 
The next day. Su Yen came out of the room with a yawn. Su Jiangwo has dressed neatly and is ready to go to work. Girl, did you sleep well at night? Have you had any nightmares? Seeing her, Su Jiangwo immediately laughed like a flower. Very good. Then go wash up quickly, and the pot will still heat up your breakfast. After finishing, go to school with your sister. Su Jiangwo's advice is to be as gentle as possible. Li Qiuhua, who had been serving beside him, felt uneasy in his heart. After living with him for more than a decade, it was the first time he had seen him so hot face pressed against someone's cold buttocks. If you say a few more words, you will be late for work. Intentionally urging. Su Jiangwo just stopped chattering and prepared to go out. Dad, have you been in the factory all day today? Su Yen suddenly spoke again, causing him to pause. I think so. You're not going anywhere today, just stay in the factory. If you have something to do, just instruct others to do it, Su Yen cautioned very seriously. Su Jiangwo was stunned for a moment, but Li Qiuhua let out a burst of music. You're talking nonsense, isn't it? Your father is the deputy factory director, and there are many important tasks waiting for him to do. She noticed that the child's head seemed somewhat abnormal, daring to say anything thanks to her father's favor. Su Yen didn't even glance at her, just repeated the matter solemnly in front of Su Jiangwo. Just stay in the factory today and don't go anywhere, is that okay? Su Jiangwo saw that she didn't seem to be joking, although she was still confused, he nodded and agreed. Anyway, it's most important to make your daughter happy first. Su Jiangwo only left before leaving, and Su Mo came out of the house with a rustling sound. Li Qiuhua urged her to eat quickly, and halfway through, she let out a scream of surprise. Momo, what's wrong with your face? Even though Su Mo tried to cover it up, she still exposed half of her swollen cheeks under her forceful pulling. Li Qiuhua was so scared that her first reaction was to take her to see a doctor. The corner of Su Mo's eye caught a glimpse of Su Yen. Su Yen always looked ahead, as if she had no interest in her affairs. Mom, don't be surprised. I accidentally fell off the bed last night, it's okay, Su Mo said with some gritted teeth. Not only did he bump into his face, but he also had a nightmare for the whole night. Su Yen didn't even wait for her to finish speaking before going to wash up. The two sisters had breakfast and went out together. Su Mo deliberately walked ahead, lowering her head and covering half of her face with her hands. But from time to time, she would look back at Su Yen. She didn't know what was going on, whether she walked fast or slow, Su Yen seemed to have always maintained the same distance from her. Moreover, Su Yen remained calm and composed. She completely held the guide cane that was supposed to be used to explore the way, and it was of no use at all. So how did she actually recognize the way? A group of children chased after each other in the courtyard and almost ran into Su Mo as they passed by. Su Mo not only didn't make them stop, but immediately stood in place and followed their gaze. Not far away, it's Su Yen. With so many children rushing towards her, she can't dodge no matter what. As expected, Su Yen would be bumped into as soon as she saw it. But at this moment, a figure suddenly appeared next to her, grabbing Su Yan's arm and forcefully pulling it aside. The mischievous cheers of the children flashed by. The person's strength was so strong that Su Yan, who was completely unprepared, felt like she had hit a hard iron plate. My eyebrows immediately furrowed. Who is so meddling? Looking up with a black cloth covering her cheeks, a handsome face fell into her sight. Su Mo, who was originally preparing to watch the excitement, was stunned at this moment. Especially when she saw clearly that it was Gu Yang, her whole person was not doing well. When Su Mo was looking at the man, he was also looking at her. The next second, she took the initiative to break free from the man's embrace. Then I immediately had a bad feeling. She is 1.65 meters tall, although not considered tall among girls, she doesn't appear too short, but now she needs to look up to see his face. 
This man should be at least 1.85 meters tall, with wide shoulders, narrow waist, and long and straight legs. Wearing the most ordinary white shirt on him, it looks overly attractive. His most superior features are still his facial features, sword eyebrows and starry eyes, high and straight nose bridge, and thin and delicate lips. Are you okay? The man's voice was actually very pleasant, not too rough or too delicate. It's like a warm jade stone, making people comfortable. It's okay, Su Yen quickly withdrew her mind and responded, but she didn't intend to say thank you. Are you Su Yen? The other party actually said her name directly. However, Su Yenxi was not surprised, as she had become a celebrity among all the people since her first day in this courtyard. It is estimated that there is no one in the entire courtyard who does not know, and Su Jiangwo has taken back the blind daughter who was sent samples in the countryside. I'm Gu Yang. Gu Yang didn't wait for her answer, but took the initiative to introduce himself. Su Yan was about to say a perfunctory sentence before leaving, but she didn't expect that Gu Yang's next sentence would make her feel a bit inexplicable. You don't know me. Gu Yang always paid attention to her reaction, even though most of her cheeks were covered in black cloth, he could still be certain that she had no emotional fluctuations when she heard his name. Should I know each other? Su Yan's words were full of exploration. She is certain that she has never met this man at all, or that he is something important that she must know. Gu Yang's expression was somewhat strange, but soon a gentle smile appeared. I am your cousin Su Yao's friend. For this answer, Su Yen felt speechless. Even Su Yao only met once on her first day back. Good morning, Brother Gu. Su Mo's coquettish voice interrupted the conversation between the two. Although Su Yen didn't turn his head to look at her, he also knew how shy and foolish she looked now. Good morning, Gu Yang also greeted her and his gentle gaze lingered on her swollen face for a second before moving away. Su Emo noticed his gaze being embarrassed and aggrieved. She thought he would ask about it, but she didn't expect him to say anything. I'm a bit disappointed. Brother Gu, I have already finished reading all the books I borrowed from you a few days ago. When do you have time? Can I come over and borrow a few more books? Of course, even if I'm not here, just tell my mom directly. Gu Yang's face was warm and warm, making people feel like basking in spring breeze. Su Mo blushed on the other side and said, Brother Gu, you're so kind. Su Yen no longer wanted to listen to this kind of unproductive conversation and turned around to leave. Gu Yang watched her steady steps with a deep gaze. End of this chapter. Is chapter 6 fun? You are listening at novelfull.audio. Is chapter 6 fun? Not only are Gu Yang and Su Yao good friends, but his father and Su Jiangwo have also been close friends for many years. So as early as when he was born, they had already arranged for a baby kiss. For so many years, this marriage has always been valid in the hearts of both families. In addition, with his relationship with Su Yao, he also has some knowledge about Su Yan's situation. Su Yan was sent to live in a rural area thousands of miles away and was only picked up a few days ago. And Su Yao also firmly told him that Su Yan's eyes still haven't recovered. I've been blind for over a decade, so I'm sure it won't get better. But now he looked at Su Yan's walking figure, and it turned out that he was completely no different from an ordinary person. Su Mo followed his gaze and felt a hint of unease in her heart. She immediately stepped aside to block in front of him. Brother Gu, don't you know Su Yen yet? She was my father's daughter before, but she has always been raised in the countryside. She just entered the city and doesn't understand many of the rules. If you say anything impolite, Brother Gu must not have the same opinion as her. Gu Yang's gaze darkened for two seconds, and then he regained his previous kindness. How could it be? She didn't say anything either. That's good. Brother Gu, I still have to take care of her, so I'll leave first. Su Mo reluctantly bid him farewell and turned back three times. The place where Su Yen walked on the street became the focus of all eyes. 
Blind people are not uncommon in county towns, but she is the only one with black cloth strips covering her eyes. The already fair face contrasts sharply with the black cloth strip, not only does it not look strange, but it also gives people an indescribable sense of mystery. As soon as Su Yen walked to the roadside, a kind-hearted person walked over and said, Little girl, are you going to cross the road? Let me help you over. Looking at a woman approaching sixty years old with a kind face, the figure of Grandma Lee appeared before her eyes. The brief loss of consciousness was taken as agreement by the woman, and she cautiously walked forward with one hand holding her arm. In this era, there are very few small cars on the road, and those with slightly better conditions ride the two or eight poles, wave after wave. The woman who should have led the way appeared a bit nervous when facing the young man riding his bike at lightning speed. When she realized it, she was actually led across the road by Su Yen. Thank you, madam. Su Yan's proactive gratitude left her unsure of how to respond. Is it her illusion? Why do you suddenly feel that this blind child doesn't actually need her help? At this moment, Song Shui and several girls from yesterday once again came to the abandoned building. Are you really going in? The timid girl had nightmares all night after returning from here yesterday, and now her legs are trembling slightly. Immersed in excitement, Song Shui was washed away with a lot of fear. Let's go, see if that blind man has already been scared to the point of urination. After speaking, he walked in with his head held high and his chest held high. The remaining few girls don't want to go in anymore. The building is still empty and silent. When they arrived at the locked second floor room, there were both fear and schadenfreude. Song Shui took out the key and had already fantasized about the exciting scene she would see next. Click. The lock opened, and the long neglected door made a piercing sound as she moved. They bravely walked in, but there was no trace of Su Yen in the room. Xinghua High School There are only five minutes left until class time. Song Shui's face turned pale as she looked towards the empty seat at the back. Su Yen is missing. They locked her up alone in that haunted abandoned building last night, originally just to scare her and teach her a lesson. The lock is intact, and if you jump off the window, even if you don't die, you will lose half your life. Both she and the other girls were afraid. They don't want to cause any harm to people. Song Shui, why don't we tell the teacher? Wang Lan, who was sitting in the back seat, trembled and said. If the Su family cannot find Su Yen to report to the police, they will definitely be taken away. Song Shui gave her a fierce glare and cursed in a voice that only the two of them could hear, Are you stupid? What does it have to do with us if she's gone? But yesterday. As long as you don't say it, no one knows. Remember, even if a blind person really dies, it has nothing to do with us. Song Shui gave a somewhat sinister reminder, but her words fell and Wang Lan's face suddenly changed. Do you understand what I mean? I thought she was scared silly, so I couldn't help but increase her volume. Wang Lan, however, had already stiffened in her seat, and Su Yan's figure was getting closer and closer in her violently contracting pupils. It seems that she doesn't quite understand what you mean. The sudden sound coming from behind made Song Shui feel a bit impatient, but the next second she realized something and even stopped breathing. Su Yan bent down and slowly approached the motionless Song Shui with her cheeks, until her lips were close to Song Shui's ears. Is it fun? The four faint words made Song Shui's head hum, and her blood boiled all over her body. She couldn't say a word anymore, she just felt suffocated by something. Just as she was about to suffocate, Su Yen stepped back and walked slowly towards her seat. Not only Song Shui and Wang Lan, but also the other few girls in the classroom had terrifying expressions as if they had seen a ghost. The sound of the class bell cannot awaken their spirits. Textile Factory Su Jiangwo has been extremely busy since coming over in the morning. Today is the day to ship goods to the outside world, and the factory director has been hospitalized recently due to illness. All the work has been piled up on him alone. 
Deputy Factory Director Su, the goods have been counted and we can proceed. Okay. Su Jiangwo responded and immediately went out, but just as he walked outside, he suddenly thought of something, with a hint of embarrassment on his face. Xiao Wang, go and see if Director Li is available. If he is, let him come with you. Since we have already agreed to our daughter, we still want to do our best. Can't you go over there? Xiao Wang was a bit puzzled, as Su Jiangwo had always been responsible for the delivery and coordination work in the factory. Su Jiangwo turned around and returned to the office, hmm, I have other important things to attend to. After dealing with Xiao Wang, there were several tasks that he needed to go out and handle later, which he used various reasons to evade. Until the accountant knocked on his office door. Deputy Factory Director Su, there is an issue with a payment here. Can you verify it with me at the savings office? Su Jiangwo immediately put down the matter at hand, and there was no room for any mistakes in the payment terms. As for agreeing to Su Yen, he could only forget about it. The bell rang for the end of class. Song Shui and Wang Lan rushed out of the classroom at the fastest speed, looking flustered as if there were wild beasts in the classroom. Su Yen sneered, only with such a little courage. Besides, she hasn't done anything yet. Just as I was about to get up, my eyebrows furrowed under the black cloth. She has repeatedly reminded Su Jiangwo not to leave the factory today, but he didn't listen. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Disaster in Factory You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Disaster in Factory Momo, I really don't know what's going on. The lock is fine, but Su Yen just came out. Song Shui found Su Mo's class, and the two girls gathered together with very ugly faces. Especially when Song Shui saw Su Mo's swollen and red cheeks, she was extremely surprised. Is it difficult for her to fly? Su Mo felt annoyed and her tone was naturally not very good. But who knew that after listening, Song Shui's eyes began to shake violently. I don't think that blind man is quite right. Although not visible to the eyes, walking is completely unaffected. Doesn't anyone think it's scary except for her? Su Mo looked at her horrified expression and was unwilling to admit that Su Yen had any outstanding qualities. Just as I was about to refute, I saw Su Yen walking towards the school gate. She is very fast, as if there is something urgent. Song Shui followed her gaze and saw that the strange feeling in Su Yan's heart was even stronger. The class is about to start, where is she going? Song Shui couldn't answer Su Mo's question. The two of them watched helplessly as Su Yan, who was blindfolded, walked briskly away from school. Savings Office There were many people handling the business, and Su Jiangwo and the accountant took the number plate and sat on the side waiting. As time passed and they were about to arrive, something unusual happened at the front counter. Firstly, the staff of the savings office suddenly showed a look of fear, and then sat stiffly on the workstation without any movement. Su Jiangwo, who was looking at the time, was poked by the accountant beside him. For a moment, I was about to ask what was going on when I saw a layer of cold sweat rising from the accountant's forehead, and he seemed to be extremely tense. Robbery don't move. Everyone squat down. Before he could react, a ferocious shout completely disrupted the order of the savings office. At least seven or eight depositors, including Su Jiangwo, were in chaos in an instant. The robbers who had been lurking in the crowd all at once showed their knives, especially the one in front of the counter who was holding a gun. The chaotic and fearful screams only lasted for two or three seconds, and everyone huddled together with their heads in the hands of the robbers. Su Jiangwo was also frightened, but compared to the panic of others, he clearly calmed down a lot. He was not far from the door, but the door was blocked by two robbers. If you try hard, it will definitely not work. After weighing the pros and cons, you can only temporarily give up the plan to resist. Put all your money in this bag, don't play any tricks, otherwise I'll shoot you all. No one dares to resist the brutality of the robbers, 
and the people in the savings office can only follow suit. And there was also a robber on Su Jiangwo's side, holding a black bag and asking them to hand over their money and valuable items one by one. Many people were trembling with fear, without any desire to resist. Hurry up! The robber impatiently urged, obviously also controlling time. When he arrived at Su Jiangwo's place, he handed over his watch and money, but to his surprise, the robber saw the chain hanging around his neck at a glance. Hand over the necklace too. The knife gleamed coldly in front of him. Su Jiangwo's face changed and he instinctively covered the necklace inside his clothes with his hand. This is not something valuable, so please hold it high. The robber's expression was even more fierce when he refused, and he slapped him. Everyone thought that Su Jiangwo couldn't risk his life with the robbers for a necklace, but to their surprise, he just counterattacked. One person, one bandit fighting together, Su Jiangwo's goal is very clear, which is to rush out. The situation is out of control. Pop. The deafening sound of gunfire rang out, accompanied by screams of terror as a woman collapsed in a pool of blood, unable to close her eyes. Su Jiangwo's heart trembled greatly. No matter how brave he was, seeing this scene with his own eyes completely shook him. He lost his ability to resist and was brutally trampled on by the robbers. The robber who opened fire had a grim expression on his face, carrying a bag full of money and preparing to call for evacuation. However, the police patrolling the streets outside quickly surrounded him due to the sound of gunfire. The leading robber immediately grabbed the nearest woman, with the muzzle of the gun pressed against her head. The others immediately understood that Su Jiangwo had been pulled up and became one of the hostages. The streets were originally crowded with onlookers, but when these robbers came out, they were so scared that they dispersed, afraid that if they ran slowly, they would be taken hostage. Don't move. You are already surrounded, put down your weapons and capture. Even if Su Jiangwo didn't have to look at the familiar voice, he knew who was leading the team, and his heart was tugging at his throat. Su Yao stood at the front, his face gloomy as he could drip water from the group of robbers. The occurrence of such a heinous robbery within his jurisdiction is simply a violation of his reputation. However, when he saw that Su Jiangwo was also among those hostages, his emotions instantly became excited. He dared not look at Su Jiangwo for a second longer, afraid of being detected by the robbers and using more intense means to target Su Jiangwo. Get out of the way, otherwise I'll kill them. The leading robber shouted loudly, and the next second will really pull the trigger. Although Su Yao was eager to save people, he could only follow the other party's instructions and dared not take any further action. As the robbers walked past holding hostages, the air around seemed to freeze. Don't catch up, otherwise they will all die. The robber threw down a threat and gradually distanced themselves from Su Yao with the hostages. The robbers didn't run quickly until they were out of the police's shooting range. Chase. Su Yao gave a command and rushed out first. Su Jiangwo was dragged and dragged into a small alley, and he noticed that the group of robbers had clearly planned their escape route. At the moment they got rid of the police, they split into three waves and fled in different directions. And he was most unfortunate to be held hostage by the leading robber, as well as two burly men. These fugitives are afraid to kill and silence after leaving the city. He is not afraid of death, but he has just received his daughter and has not fulfilled his duty as a father for a day. I suddenly regretted not listening to Su Yan's words. If only I hadn't left the factory today. Hurry up and leave, or I'll ruin you. Noticing his procrastination, the threat became even greater. This alley is extremely remote and even has no passers-by. As long as they go out, there will be someone to pick them up and they can escape smoothly. As there were less than a few dozen meters left, suddenly a gust of wind swept through the alley. The wind was so eerie that everyone was blinded by the sand and wind before they could react. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Su Yen Arrives You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Su Yen Arrives, What's Going On? 
The leading robber roared, but no one could answer. Su Jiangwo was also confused, feeling that the robbers beside him had completely ignored him, even if he couldn't open his eyes and ran away. But he only took a few steps because he couldn't distinguish the direction and crashed into the wall with a loud bang, causing his eyes to fall black. The incident happened too quickly. When the strong wind stopped, the three robbers saw that Su Jiangwo had fainted, while a slender figure stood at the entrance of the alley not far away. That is a girl, very young and thin. Her face was covered by a black cloth, and she was holding a strange stick that seemed to be used to explore the way. Even though she appeared so eerie, the three robbers completely let go of their guard after seeing her clearly. The leading robber immediately looked at the bag in his hand, making sure that the money he had snatched was all good, with a fierce expression on his face. Su Jiangwo is in a coma, so he can't be a hostage anymore, but now there happens to be someone coming to his door. When they saw her walking towards them because she was blind and didn't know the situation in the alley, the three robbers tacitly prepared. Holding a blind man hostage is easy for them. Su Yen first looked at Su Jiangwo, who was unconscious, and saw the wounds on his face and the red sleeves on his arms, as if he was shrouded in a shadow. The three ferocious-looking robbers had completely mistaken her for blind and even knew not to make too much noise to approach her. You all deserve to die. The cold words were like a thunderbolt, making all three people who were already close to Chi Chi tremble with disbelief. They didn't even have time to react. Three talismans were released by Su Yen and entered their bodies with a whoosh. A burning sensation that scorched their hearts and bones, as if they were about to turn all their internal organs into ashes. Ah! The three people's mournful screams spread through the alley, shocking. Su Yen watched expressionlessly as they collapsed and twisted, convulsing all over, in a state of madness. In just one minute from start to finish, the three robbers had no room for resistance, and they had already exhausted more and inhaled less. Su Yen treated them as air and walked to Su Jiangwo's side to check his injuries. The wound on the arm is quite deep, but fortunately it did not damage the muscles and bones. There is a big bump on the forehead, and the coma should be due to the impact on the head. Why didn't you listen when I told you not to leave the factory? Fortunately, she arrived in time this time, otherwise the consequences would be unimaginable. At this moment, a ghostly figure floated behind her, watching the three robbers lying in a miserable state not far away, and instinctively trembling their empty bodies. Daring to provoke adults in this world, whether they are humans or ghosts, is impatience in life. Sir, someone is here. His words fell for less than two minutes, and Su Yao ran in with a few people panting heavily. They all held their guns tightly in their hands, clearly prepared for a firefight, but were stunned when they saw the situation in the alley. Su Yen, how could you be here? Su Yao, who was the first to regain consciousness, stared at Su Yen in astonishment. However, in just a few seconds, all attention fell on the three robbers who couldn't even scream, as well as the unconscious Su Jiangwo. What exactly is going on? There are no signs of fighting in the alley. Except for Su Yao, several police officers rushed to the side of the three robbers at the fastest speed. The three of them looked intact, but their breath was extremely weak and they had fallen into a coma. How is uncle doing? Su Yao immediately checked the situation of Su Jiangwo. He seems to have injured his arm. Could you please bandage him first? Su Yen reminded and used the word, like, after all, she is now seen as blind by everyone. Okay. Although Su Yao was full of doubts about Su Yan's appearance, he also knew what was more important now. Ten minutes later, the police car arrived. Not only was Su Jiangwo taken to the hospital, but even those three robbers were taken there first. Captain, we only intercepted one side of the two waves of robbers, and there should be two more people escaping. The hostages were not seriously injured, and the stolen money was also recovered. What about the situation at the savings office? Zhao's team has already taken someone over to handle it. The entire police station has been alarmed by the loss of life. 
Su Yao listened to the reports from his subordinates and deeply despised this group of extremely vicious robbers. The two fugitives continued to pursue, and the sober ones were all taken back for questioning. Everything was arranged and we arrived at the entrance of Su Jiangwo's ward. Su Jiangwo has not yet woken up, but the doctor has checked and confirmed that the problem is not serious. Su Yen sat by the hospital bed, and the scorching noon sun enveloped her through the window. She did nothing and had no expression, just sat quietly. Su Yao was stunned at this scene. He is five years older than Su Yen, and his aunt has an impression of Su Yan's mother. That is a gentle woman like water, always treating people sincerely. She is very beautiful and unforgettable at a glance. Unfortunately, such a perfect woman was mercilessly taken away by the heavens. Until now, he still vividly remembers how his uncle was in agony during the two years when his aunt had just passed away. A few days ago, when he saw Su Yen, he felt that the girl had a somewhat aloof temperament, like a tightly wrapped stone around him. But now, with such peaceful times, he could see the shadow of his aunt from her. If her eyes were not blind, would she have a third of auntie's radiance? Su Yen in the ward saw through the black cloth that Su Yao was looking at her with a strange gaze, but she did not respond. Is he suspicious of her? After all, it's hard to justify her sudden appearance in the alley, which was supposed to be at school. When Su Yao withdrew her gaze and walked in, she was also prepared. Su Yen is me. Next, I have to ask you a few questions. You don't have to be afraid to answer truthfully. Su Yen. Okay. How could you be there? What happened in the past? Su Yao asked while observing her expression. I skipped class and originally just wanted to stroll around. I heard some noise in the alley, as if it was my father's voice, so I went over, Su Yen replied calmly. And then what? Su Yao did not doubt what she said, only concerned about how the three criminals could have fainted. They seemed to have a dispute, and there was no sound afterwards. Is it infighting? Did you take action? I'm not sure, I can't see it with my eyes. I only walked in after there was no sound, Su Yan's answer was still reasonable. Su Yao frowned. If it was really internal strife, why didn't any external injuries be found on the three of them? How can we explain why they are all unconscious? There are many doubts, but the only eyewitness is also blind. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Raises Suspicions. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Raises Suspicions, Why Are You Skipping Class? Su Yao asked the last question before leaving. To his knowledge, it was Su Yen who insisted on going to Xinhua High School to study, even though her situation was only suitable for staying in the courtyard obediently. For no reason, just do it if you want. Su Yan's answer made Su Yao frown slightly. However, they did not continue to inquire further. Soon, the ward quieted down again. In the afternoon, Su Jiangwo woke up and Li Qiuhua rushed to the hospital after receiving news of his accident. With a runny nose and tears, holding Su Jiangwo and crying non dot stop. Su Jiangwo, who narrowly escaped death, couldn't help but feel a sense of emotion when he saw his wife and children. Su Yen casually found a reason to leave the ward. But before leaving the hallway, someone grabbed my clothes. Sister, I also want to go out and play with you. Five-year-old Su Chang blinked his eyes and a naive smile appeared on his small face. My eyes are not convenient, Su Yen clearly refused. Then I'll hold you. Su Chiang couldn't understand the meaning behind the words, so his little hand grabbed her hand directly. Su Yen was stunned for a moment, instinctively wanting to shake off, but before she could move, Su Chiang had already pulled her out. Two people, one big and one small, came out of the hospital. Su Chiang chattered incessantly, extremely excited. Su Yen just listened, her gaze under the black cloth occasionally falling on the hands held by her. She has always lived with Grandma Li and rarely interacted with other children of the same age, and because she chose that path, 
her temperament became increasingly cold and solitary, and she hates the touch of others very much. But for some reason now, the little hand wrapped in her palm didn't make her resist as much. Sister, can't your eyes really see it? Hmm. She didn't know if this question was due to the child's curiosity, or if it was inspired by Li Qiuhua or Su Mo. Ah, sister, you're so pitiful. Su Chang suddenly uttered this sentence. Su Yan's mouth curved upwards, marking the first time in her life that someone had called her pitiful. And it's still such a small carrot head. Are you not afraid of me? Usually, when children see her, they don't take the initiative to get close to her. Su Chang shook his head vigorously and straightened his chest, I'm not afraid. Dad said my sister and I are a family, and when I grow up, I will protect my mother and two sisters. Su Yen didn't know how to react to these words for a moment. But my mother also said that my sister and I are not the same mother's children, Su Chang said with a hint of doubt. Su Yen relaxed instead and said, Does your mother want you to stay away from your sister? This time, Su Chang shook his head and nodded again. Obviously, his parents had a completely different attitude, which was too difficult for a five-year-old child to understand. Sister, I want to eat sugar dumplings. The topic ended because all of Su Chang's gaze was drawn to the sugar man not far away. Su Yen rubbed his hair and said, let's go buy a sugar figurine. The atmosphere in the hospital is oppressive. Su Yao and the rushing police chief Lu Jun looked solemn. This is also the first time we have encountered such a situation, and we cannot detect any lesions on the examination. The three of their internal organs seem to have been burned by something, and the available treatment methods have no effect. I'm afraid they won't be able to persist tonight. Almost all the doctors in the entire hospital are gathered here. They have also encountered various difficult and complicated diseases, but the situation of these three robbers has severely crushed their understanding in the medical field. How could a well-behaved person have such a situation? Did they get poisoned? Lu Jun's voice was low. The robbery that occurred today has already alarmed the whole city. I had originally planned to wait until the three robbers woke up and immediately bring them back for interrogation, but to my surprise, they were all going to die. We did not detect any toxins in the blood of the three individuals. The doctor's answer once again plunged the surroundings into a deadly silence. After a moment, Lu Jun could only ask the doctors to leave first and then understand the situation with Su Yao. Su Yao explained it from beginning to end, but he still found a reason for Su Yan's appearance in the alley for no reason. Later, the interrogation of the other robbers went smoothly, and as for the three of them, they can only be said to have lived up to their deaths. Although there are mysteries everywhere, it can only be regarded as three robbers themselves suffering from unknown diseases. Lu Jun indeed did not notice Su Yan's situation and said with certainty, Your reaction this time was very rapid, ensuring the safety of the villagers to the greatest extent possible. However, the occurrence of such a heinous robbery incident still reflects many problems. Please stay here and handle the rest of the work. Yes, Su Yao replied. After seeing Lu Jun off, before he could relax for a few minutes, the instruments in the ward sounded a piercing alarm when Su Yen returned with Su Chang, she realized that the atmosphere was not right. Encountering Su Yao with a heavy complexion and hurried steps in the corridor. Su Yao glanced at her and walked over from the side. Su Yen raised her eyebrows, and at this moment, a ghost appeared to answer her doubts. Sir, those three robbers have died. The news of the three deaths did not stir a ripple in her heart. Jiang Wo, this time it really scared me to death. If something happens to you, I and the children won't be able to survive. Li Qiuhua was still afraid in the ward over here. Don't worry, I'm not doing well now. Besides, Yen Yen has just returned, how could I be willing to just leave her like this? Su Jiang Wo said as he thought to himself. Li Qiuhua immediately showed a hint of dissatisfaction, in your heart, there is only Su Yen, a daughter. Momo and Xiangxiang are not important. Of course not, they still have you, 
I'm very confident. After Su Jiangwo finished speaking, he smiled at her. Li Qiuhua still snorted, when you went out this morning, the girl said not to leave the factory today. If you really listened to her, there wouldn't be such a thing. After complaining, not only she but also Su Jiangwo's cheeks tightened. Obviously, both of them realized something at the same time. Jiang Wo, is there a problem with that girl? Li Qiuhua was frightened by what came to her mind, even her voice trembled slightly. Su Jiang Wo suddenly regained consciousness and gave her a fierce glare. You have the problem. No, you can't see her clearly, but she doesn't seem blind at all. Today, she insisted that you don't leave the factory. Does she know something might happen? Li Qiuhua is not doing well as a whole. Is it possible that Su Yen is a demon? Su Jiangwo's face was extremely ugly. Shut up. Today's incident was just a coincidence. If I hear you say such things again in the future, don't blame me for turning a blind eye. Excitedly scolding, but in the end, there was still a hint of unease in my heart. At this moment, Su Yen stood outside the door, listening clearly to their conversation just now. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Father and son of the Gu family visiting the door. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 Father and son of the Gu family visiting the door under Su Jiangwo's insistence, he was discharged in the afternoon. Returning to the courtyard, many neighbors who heard the news rushed over. By the time we had dealt with everyone, the sky had already turned completely dark. Su Mo only found out when he returned from school that something had happened to him. While he was frightened, his gaze at Su Yen was even more strange. My father was kidnapped by the robbers, but Su Yen happened to appear. Everyone thought it was a coincidence, but there was always a voice in her heart telling her, absolutely not. Yen Yen really skipped class on the second day of enrollment. Would it be disrespectful to the teacher? At the dinner table, a seemingly casual sentence made the atmosphere tense. Su Jiangwo and Li Qiuhua also looked toward Su Yen together. Su Yen ate her meal calmly, as if she hadn't heard it. Su Mo's face, which had been overlooked, was not very attractive. Su Jiangwo was the first to speak up, but instead of blaming, he cared, Yen Yen, are you unhappy at school? If you're unhappy, it's better not to go to school. Su Yen then replied, I'm not unhappy. Why do you want to skip class? Li Qiuhua continued to gossip and gloat. Of course, I won't miss such a good opportunity to strike Su Yen. Do you really want to know? Su Yen faced the intentional harassment of the mother and daughter and decided to put down the dishes. Su Mo provoked his gaze and said, Or do you have any secret that cannot be revealed? Originally, Su Jiangwo was already worried about this matter, but now when she asks her this question, she becomes even more nervous. Su Yen looked at Su Mo and said, Then you have to ask yourself. Su Mo was stunned, and Su Jiangwo and Li Qiuhua also looked confused. What is the relationship between her skipping class and Su Mo? Next, Su Yen said with a smile on her face, Actually, I was targeted by my classmate last night and the reason that classmate targeted me was because she was Su Mo's friend. I was in a bad mood, so I skipped class and went out to relax. Su Mo I originally wanted to embarrass Su Yen, but I didn't expect to be beaten up now. Su Jiang Wo's face turned completely black. Although not Su Mo's biological father, she is also a daughter who has grown up from a humble perspective. If these words were spoken from someone else's mouth, he might even question the truth, but Su Yen almost immediately recognized them. Su Mo. Is what Yen Yen said true? The suppressed voice carried a hint of disbelief and disappointment. Not only did Su Mo tremble this time, but even Li Qiuhua showed a look of fear. For the first time in thirteen years, Su Jiangwo was so angry with Su Mo that he even called her full name. Su Yan's voice rang out again, Dad, do not get angry if you have any injuries on your body. 
Besides, Su Mo probably didn't intentionally target me, maybe just a few complaints with friends. They might have been wrong. Su Mo, am I right? Su Mo's breathing was not smooth anymore, and she was horrified to find that everything Su Yen said was correct. This feeling is like Su Yen inserting her ears and eyes around her, and her actions cannot escape. I really didn't ask them to do that, and I only found out this morning. Dad, I treat Yen Yen like my younger sister. How could I treat her badly? I can swear. Ye Jiang Wo, M.O.M.O. was the person you grew up watching from a young age. You should be the most clear about what kind of person she is. In order to welcome Yen Yen back, she even gave up her own room. This is just a misunderstanding. Li Qiuhua panicked and helped explain. Since it was a misunderstanding, it would be better to eliminate it in the future. Anti Qiuhua, do you think so? Su Yan's tone was gentle and there was not a hint of displeasure. But Li Qiuhua deeply realized her strength. In just two or three simple sentences, they hit the mother and daughter, and if anything happens to this girl in the future, it can be completely blamed on their heads. The most important thing was the blow to Su Mo. The father-daughter relationship with Su Jian for thirteen years was easily torn apart by her. Unfortunately, their mother and daughter could only be led by Su Yan's nose. Yes, we are a family, of course we should live a peaceful life. I will definitely double my kindness to you in the future. Although not sincere, the tone is incredibly sincere. Su Mo's hand, holding chopsticks, had white knuckles and was extremely unwilling. Su Jiang Wo's face softened a bit. A meal was silently finished in the background and it wasn't until Gu Qingfeng and Gu Yang's father and son came to visit that the atmosphere became lively again. Lao Su, it's not that I'm talking about you. Do you still consider us young people of twenty? The most important thing when encountering such a situation is to save our lives. Money is all external things, why can't you just think so hard? When old friends met, Gu Qingfeng came up to complain, obviously knowing the ins and outs of the situation. Su Yen looked at Gu Qingfeng, then at Su Jiangwo. Previously, she only knew that Gu Yang and Su Yao were good friends, and it seemed that the relationship between the two elders was also very good. If they really want money, I would be happy. They insist on snatching my chain, can I not fight them hard? Su Jiangwo explained with great confidence. Su Yen frowned upon hearing this, unaware that such a thing was still happening. So what kind of chain can be more important than his life? Li Qiuhua didn't know what was on her mind, and her face looked a bit ugly. Gu Qingfeng was taken aback for a moment, revealing a hint of clarity. You really are. After speaking, his gaze fell straight on Su Yen sitting beside him. After looking up and down, his expression became even more kind. Is this Yen Yen? She looks really similar to your mother. I'm your Uncle Gu. Su Yen politely stood up and said, Hello Uncle Gu. She blindfolded her cheeks, how could she see her appearance clearly? However, Uncle Gu had even seen her deceased mother, which surprised her. Gu Yang also looked at her. Gu Qingfeng's words greatly pleased Su Jiangwo, making him laugh even if his face was hurt. Yen Yen is 7% like her mother and 3% like me. Words are full of pride. Gu Qingfeng felt like it had been a long time since he looked so carefree. Since Yen Yen has taken it back and let go of all your worries over the years, shouldn't we also start organizing next? My own son is already quite old and in recent years, the threshold of the Gu family has been trampled down by matchmakers, but his family doesn't need an attitude. Now that Su Yen has finally reached adulthood, the faster the marriage, the better. Completely unaware, Su Yen suddenly had an ominous premonition. Li Qiuhua and Su Mo were also in a confused state, unable to understand what Gu Qingfeng meant. Gu Yang was very calm and didn't speak from beginning to end. Su Jiangwo immediately stared and his face drooped. This reaction was unexpected for Gu Qingfeng. 
how could you be such a kind that hearted old man to come and see me? It turned out you had this idea. My Yen Yen just came back, so you want to snatch her away from me? There's no way. He hasn't even had enough of it yet, no one wants to take his daughter away. Gu Qingfeng, who was still smiling a second ago, was not happy to hear him say so. End of this chapter